Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video. I hope you're all okay. So today's video is going to be another midweek crafty catch up type video. I've got a few things to update you on, um, four or five things. I've been working on the twirl of my Jack Trench. So I thought I'd update you all with where I am with that. And then a little bit of crochet, a sewing plan, and a cute little crafty project as well that I've been working on. So I hope you'll enjoy today's video. So before I get into sharing all the crafty stuff with you, I thought I'd quickly share something that I've been trying out recently for free, and that is the Readly app. So we've been chatting quite a lot on this channel and in the comments about books and things like that, and I've really enjoyed talking about books and reading and things. So I thought this one might be something that you would all enjoy as well. So I've been enjoying a free trial of this app and so far I'm really loving it. So if you haven't heard of Readly, they are an online digital magazine subscription service and they have literally thousands of magazine and newspaper titles available to download all in one place. So for us as a family, we all have quite different interests, but in this app there's something for everyone. I love that there are some sewing and knitting titles in there. So there's Simply Sewing magazine, there's Sew magazine, so now and quilty magazines and there are also loads of magazines for knitting and crochet as well even tutorial magazines like knitting for beginners which i thought was great a few people have said to me recently that they would really love to learn how to knit so you never know you might find your new hobby through this app so I really love that there are loads of craft magazine titles available, but if you're anything like me, I really enjoy looking at lifestyle magazines as well. So I enjoy reading Good Housekeeping, A Woman and Home, Red Magazine, because I really like the balance of beauty and fashion and home and cooking and things like that. And the good thing about this app is that you can actually save parts of the magazine that you want to refer back to. So for example, I've been saving recipes recently that I want to come back to and try and cook this autumn winter time, lovely stews and casseroles and things like that. And I don't know if you're anything like me, but I've had piles of magazines around my house in the past where I've been meaning to go through them and cut out and save pages that I want to come back to, but I never get around to it. So I love that here everything is all in one place in this app and you can just refer back to it when you need to. Readly has also been great for the rest of our family as well. So for example, my husband and son are both keen golfers. They love to play golf. And there are a good range of golf magazines on the app as well. And for my daughter, she loves the kind of kiddie magazines and the pets magazines. So those are great for her. And she's also into horses and there are horse magazines on there as well. So she was pleased with that. What I love about this is that it's so portable. So I don't know about you, but I'm a chronic phone scroller. If I ever have five minutes where I'm waiting around for the kids or for an appointment or something like that. So I love that this will be available on my phone and stop me maybe scrolling through too much social media. If you'd like to try Readly for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below this video where you can sign up and get yourself two months for free. Once you've signed up, it's really quick and easy to get started. You simply need to download the app, log in, and you can browse through the hundreds of titles and get reading straight away. If you do try the app and you find out that it's not actually for you, you can cancel it at any time, which I think is great. So I'll leave all the details and the link to sign up in my description below this video. And I hope you'll enjoy using the app if you do give it a try. So anyway, on to crafty news. So before I get started catching you up on everything I've been up to, I'll just quickly share what I'm wearing. And what I'm wearing today is the patina blouse by Friday Pattern Company, which I made in the summertime with the short sleeves. And I really like this blouse. It's made from a lovely Atelier Brunette viscose twill fabric in blush um, with a really sort of delicate print on over it. And I do love this fabric. It's so soft and drapey to wear. I had this in my stash for ages before I got around to sewing something up with it, but I do think it works up well as a patina blouse. Where shall I start? <laughs> I think I will talk first of all about my Jack Trench because that's probably the most exciting. You can see that I've got my friend here next to me. So you can tell I've been doing some serious sewing. I've been making a twirl. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and show you this as best as I can. <laughs> so I just put in a quick image of the Jack Trench here so you can see what it looks like. So I ordered this pattern from the fold line and I had it printed out as a copy shop pattern, which was really lovely and easy to do. And I'm glad that I did that. So when it came to cutting out my size for the coat, um, I actually fell between two different sizes. So the sizes range from a size 32 to a 46. 32 is a bust 76 centimetres and um, a 46 goes up to a bust of 109 centimetres. It really throws me a little bit when um, body measurements are given in centimetres. I did have to convert this 
into inches before I knew what size I fell between. But um, yeah, it turns out that I fall between a size 34, which is the second size here, and a size 36. So a 36 in hips and a 34 in bust. So I needed to grade the pattern from the bust out to the hips. Um, and in the pattern instructions, it does give you quite clear instructions on what to do if you do need to grade at all. And I thought that was good and really helpful. Um, and another thing that it tells you in the pattern um, information is actually, it tells you that you should make a muslin. So it advises you to make a muslin, but it also tells you which parts of the pattern you'll need to cut out just to get the kind of shell of the coat so that you can try it on for fit and everything before you make your actual final version. I read through the pattern instructions as I usually do before even cutting out any of this pattern. And um, I was a bit befuddled <laughs> by the collar instructions. And I don't know if anyone else does this, but I read through things time and time again. I get them all muddled up in my head and I think I'm never gonna be able to do that. That collar sounds really difficult, but sometimes I think you need to have the garment and the sewing in front of you to know exactly what you've got to do. And that was the case with this. So I really wanted to cut out the collar part of the jacket and also the facing inside here. Um, just so that I could have a practice with that and just make sure that I knew what I was doing. So I used an old bed sheet, which isn't actually an old bed sheet. This is actually one of our current bed sheets, which I ended up using for this 12 because we didn't have any old ones. I've had a clear out recently and I didn't have any old sheets to use. So I've actually used one of our current um, bed sheets, but it's only a cheapy one from Primark. So I thought I could get away with that and I'll replace it. <laughs> So I wanted to practice the collar, but I also wanted to check the length and obviously the width of it and everything. When it came to it, the instructions and the pattern were actually really good. And after reading a little bit more into this pattern, I realised that they actually had a really helpful sew along blog on their website, which isn't a video, but it's sort of broken down more and there are more pictures available to tell you what to do at each stage of the pattern. And that was also really helpful. Everything worked pretty well. I've practised the back here with the pleat. And then this bit, <laughs> the flap, I think this is called. I originally intended just to make this as a sleeveless shell of a jacket so that I could try it on for length and width. But when I came to fit this on, I realized that the armholes were actually quite tight. Um, and I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't be able to wear a jumper or a sweater or whatever quite comfortably underneath it. So I ended up making two sleeve twirls. So I've got one full length sleeve here. <laughs> which I made up according to the pattern instruction and sizes. I made one sleeve originally, tried that on with a jumper and realized it was actually gonna be quite tight. So I then altered the armhole on this side and I altered the sleeve piece, which is only half a sleeve because that's all the fabric I had left. Um, and tried it on again and realized that my altered sleeve fit much better with a jumper underneath it than my normal sleeve. So what I've done is actually redrawn the armhole so that I have a centimetre and a half more room at the underarm here, which also meant that I needed to widen the sleeves as well. So I needed to redraw all of those pattern pieces. Um, and of course, when you make a change like that, you need to make sure that you change all of your main body pieces of the coat and also the lining as well. So I've redrawn all of my paper pattern pieces now. So I'm ready to go. So I hope all of that waffle made some sort of sense and you can kind of um, see where I'm at with this. <laughs> so my lovely proper fabric has arrived now. So I'll show you what that's like. So here's my proper fabric. So I have this lovely, lovely, this is just so beautiful, tensile twill fabric from Fabric Godmother. And um, this was one of the fabrics that I did say I would possibly order. Um, I ended up going for this color. I think it's called plaster. And it's just the most perfect colour. It's just exactly what I imagined it to be. It's exactly what I wanted. Um, it, you know, sometimes you order online and you don't necessarily get the colour you're expecting because it's really hard to photograph things online. But this one is absolutely perfect. I really love it. It's so smooth and soft and drapey. So I'm really pleased with that one. And I also ordered some lining fabric from Minerva. So I am an odd about lining. <laughs> I did share some possibilities in a recent video of what I might go for, but in the end I decided to go for something completely different. And I went for this um, Atelier Brunette viscose fabric. And I went for this one because I really liked the beige in it. So you can see that it's on a navy background. It's got kind of a rusty print on it, a bit abstract, 
and then also this pinky beige colour. And I thought that would match really nicely with this tencel twill before I'd received any of it. And I'm pleased to say that the match just couldn't really be any more perfect. <laughs> so the beige in this really matches the beige in this tencel twill. I can't wait to get working on them, but I've been putting off cutting out this coat because I'm scared. <laughs> this fabric is so lovely, I just don't want to ruin it and I hate the cutting it out. It's just, there's just so much potential for things that could go wrong. But anyway, I'm going to get on with that because I would really love to have this coat done by half term. I am cutting it fine as always. Half term at the moment while I'm recording this is two weeks away. So I have two weeks to get this done. Um, maybe less by the time you're actually watching this video, but um, stay tuned for my makes video in October to see if I actually get that done. And then in cute projects that I news, I've been working on some more fabric pumpkins for our house. So we recently decorated over the summer and um, our front room is a lot more blue now than it was before. We do love blue in this house. It was a bit blue before, now it's even more blue. So I thought I'd make some complimentary pumpkins to go in our lounge. Not only because we've decorated, but also because I cannot find anywhere the pumpkins that I made last year, <laughs> which is a bit annoying. And I suppose they'll turn up when I'm looking for Christmas decorations, but I decided to make some new ones anyway. So I made a, a larger white, pumpkin and then two smaller ones one in this sort of natural linen-y look fabric and then one in a viscose so this one in the viscose I wasn't quite sure how that would work I don't think I've ever made a pumpkin from viscose fabric and I didn't really think it would work very well because you can't really get the defined shape that you would from like this linen-y cottony stuff <laughs> but actually it worked really nicely I stuffed it really full and then um, yeah it's, it's worked out really nice and I wonder if you can recognize this fabric it's from a garment that I've shared recently but I do love this fabric and I thought it was really nice and autumn -y. It goes with our lounge and it's also got some nice oranges and greens in there for autumn time since I was making some more pumpkins for myself I also decided that I would update my blog and I've since added a full tutorial on there now for how to make these pumpkins with written out instructions and I've also added a template on there which you can download if you'd like to make your own pumpkin so I'll leave a link for where to find this blog on my website down below so if you do fancy making yourself some pumpkin there are really clear instructions on there now I do have a video that I released about this time last year of me sewing some of these pumpkins Ooh. So if you are more of a sort of visual person, then I'll pop a link to that video below as well. But yeah, I'm really pleased with those and they look so pretty in the front room. Next, I have another sewing plan that may or may not be done by half term, but I'd really like this one to be done before half term again, because in a couple of weeks time, I'm actually going to a golf do with my husband and my son. It's like a little award ceremony type thing, but I thought it would be really nice to make myself a dress in time for that maybe. I did share this one in a recent video, it's one of the fabrics I picked up from the knitting and stitching show and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to make with this. But I think what I might actually make is the short version of the Lyra because I've never made that and I do think it would look really nice sewn up in this. And it would go really nicely with black tights and boots and things like that. So yeah, I'm hoping I might get that done, fingers crossed, I am cutting it fine. And then just a little crochet update, so you may remember Remember that I share this humongous crochet blanket that I've been working on for years. I'd love to know when I started this actually, but it's got to be a good two or three years ago now. So I'm working back and forth on this at the moment and I was just going to carry on with it until I ran out of wool basically. So I have three balls left and this is the one that I'm working on um, and after this there'll be two balls left. So when I get to the end of this ball of wool I'm going to stop with the blanket and then I'm going to try and edge it. And I'm not sure whether I'm just going to go around the edge in like a double crochet or something like that, or if I'm going to try and put a kind of scalloped shell stitch, I think it's called, around the edge, because I did that on a baby blanket once and it looked really pretty. But I do think it would take forever <laughs> on this humongous blanket. So I'm going to have a little think about that. And I'm a little bit worried now, actually, as to whether or not I've got enough wool to finish the whole blanket, because this is really wide and, um, one board of this only only gives you about four rows of um, blanket. So I'm not quite sure if two balls is gonna be enough to edge the whole blanket, but I did notice recently that Hobbycraft actually have this yarn still in stock. So hopefully if I do run out, I'll be able to pop over there and get some more if I need to. But I thought I would just show you that. It's really, really massive now. <laughs> 
but I really want to get this done because I think it would be a good one for obviously winter time and while I'm working on it in the evenings at the moment I just have it over me and it's so warm and cozy so I really want to have this out of the to-do basket and um, so that we can actually use it. So very quickly before I go, I'll just do a quick reading and watching updates. So I haven't got a lot to share in terms of reading at the moment. I'm still reading The Rose Code all about Bletchley Park. And obviously I've already shared about my Readly app, which I'm really enjoying at the moment. In terms of watching, I thought I'd share a documentary that I watched recently. So this was just something that came up as a recommended program for me on iPlayer. And it was called The Trouble at Topshop. And it was really interesting. It's just something that I randomly clicked on. So if you're from the UK, you'll know Topshop. It's a huge clothing store that's been around since the 60s, I think, for many, many years now. And it's kind of grown and developed over the years and changed. But when I was younger, it was like my favorite shop. I used to absolutely love Topshop. I bought so many clothes from there. So did all my friends. And it was just like the place to go. And if you know London as well, you'll know the huge flagship top shop store that used to be there right at the center of Oxford Street and it was just huge and amazing to a teenage girl that loves shopping clothes. <laughs> so I visited that a couple of times as well and I really really loved going there. Anyway this documentary was all about the rise and fall of Topshop basically. So Topshop recently went into administration and closed down. I believe you can still buy their clothes online through ASOS and websites like that but in terms of like the actual shops and their website that's all gone now and it's such a shame but it was just really about the fashion of Topshop and how at the beginning it was kind of dominated by men so men decided what clothes the shop was going to stock and things like that and then as time went on and women were more sort of prominent in those kind of roles it told you about the women that came in and changed the styles and really sort of brought the shop and made it what it was and um, how they chose the clothes and how they made it a quality clothing store. But that was interesting to me just to see about the rise and fall of Topshop. If I can, I'll link that down below, but if not, I'll definitely make sure I get the title right and put it in the description below for you to watch. Other than that, I really haven't had a lot of watching time recently. We seem to have been so busy in the evenings. So I'm just plodding on with the things I've already shared with you, like Call the Midwife and House of the Dragon and things like that. So yeah, hoping for some more time soon, around half term maybe. <laughs> So I think that's everything I wanted to catch you up with today. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Take care everyone, enjoy the rest of your week and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.